Well, good afternoon, everybody, uh, and thank you for joining this Al Technic Tech Talk that we've put on today. Um, we're going to discuss some ball valves today, and, and we're going to discuss the different elements of ball valves, so that the reasons why we use them, um, the internal components, the different types of ball valves, different features that each valve carry, um, and hopefully give a little bit of an insight into, into why we do what we do uh, with the design process of valves and, and the different applications that they can be used for. So. So we'll make a start, and I think the first thing that, that is the best thing to look at is, is why do we use, you know, why do we use ball valves, what's their intended use? So a ball valve is to shut off, uh, is a shut off valve that controls the flow of a liquid or a gas uh, by means of a rotary ball having a bore. And by rotating the ball a quarter turn or 90 degrees uh, around its axis, the medium can flow through or can be blocked. So we use it as, as isolation, that's their intended use. I know that that there are people who can sometimes use them for you know restricting flow and stuff but their primary use is there for an, for isolation or to or to be open itself they're characterized by a long service life uh, and they provide a reliable ceiling over the lifespan even when the valve is not in use for a long time uh, so as a result they are more, far more popular to shut off valve than, for example the gate valve uh, and moreover they are more resistant against contaminated media than most other types of valves so I think the life of a ball valve, I think it's only ever really designed to be in 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 one of two um, scenarios. So it's either it's either open or closed. They're not really designed to be open and closed all of the time because they're there for either isolation. If you're, say, for instance, drain down a tank or whatever else you need to isolate the incoming, um, or, or they're just left open or left closed at any one time for prolonged periods of time, as well. I think it's quite important to remember that you know they're not necessarily there to be open and closed on a on a regular basis. But there are different types of valves. Um, you know, we know the ball valve as a, as a common ball valve, um, but there are different types. So we'll, we'll take a look now at what those different types are. So, you know, we have the standard types, which we've all seen, you know, the threaded and connection types. Uh, and the standard ball valve consists of a housing uh, seat, a ball, uh, and a lever for, for, for ball rotation or for operation. And these balls are characterised by by simple design, really. Um, and there are two type, two main types of connection for ball valves that, that we see predominantly in the marketplace, and that's a threaded and a compression version. Generally, uh, a threaded version is is more for a sort of semi-commercial or light commercial into the sort of industrial world, um, and we tend to associate the compression side of things with more of a domestic market, so more of the you know, the housing market or smaller applications as opposed to the larger where we use screwed steel pipe work. Um, but these connection types are the most common uh, and include the wide variety of ball valves. Um, ball valves with approval for, for specific media and applications obviously have mini ball valves and ball valves with an integrated strainer or a breed point. And it goes on and on. You know, there's many adaptations over the years of how ball valves are used. Um, you know, like I say, some have an integrated strainer. We have ones with gauge ports. We have ones with drain offs, etc. So there is an evolution of this as it's gone on. But there is obviously a, a standard ball valve that we all know and love. Um, they have a wider range of options uh, and large operating range for pressure and temperature. So, you know, they cover off a whole realm of, of performance criteria when it, when it comes to the ball valve itself. Now, another type uh, which we've recently introduced for, for our technique is the press end type as well. Um, and these valves offer all the benefits of heat free press insulation. So without the requirement for hot work permit, saving time money. So where previously, um, you know, we've had applications on sites where we've had to use, uh, you know, whether you use solder, whether you use brazing, we have to go through the whole process of, of getting hot work permits if you're working on sites, and obviously all the protection that comes around that. There's obviously a, a big requirement now for, for the press end or for the press fit market so we have our range of, of valves that sit within this press fit market as well we've got a leak, bef uh, leak before press feature on there so what that does it ensures that if we if we make sure that that if, if the valves aren't pressed and we miss a connection then obviously as you start to pour water through it will make sure it leaks so you don't go too far um, you know there are some press fit systems where they'll push together and they will hold a certain degree of water a certain amount of pressure um, before there's a leak um, evident but the one that we have here has got this this patented leak leak before feature in there um, so we don't miss any joints and we don't you know we're protecting ourselves from any catastrophic leaks they're designed for using both domestic and commercial uh, healthcare premises on hot and cold water services. So they cover all the installations that, that you'd ever really need to get involved in, really. So we're covering that whole spectrum of installations, which is which is obviously a positive that we've got there. Now, different body types as well. So <clears throat> there's, there's different types of valves. And, you know, obviously we, we have a ball valve. 
but there's different comps of housing, different types that they come in, and we'll, we'll have a look at what some of those are now to try and clear up, um, you know, what's what and what we look at. So, a one-piece ball valve, and this is the cheapest variant. Uh, the two parts which enclose the ball are pressed or welded. Um, the valves cannot be opened for clean or maintenance, and these these are generally used for for low-demand applications. So it's kind of like a very entry-level valve, um, something where you're not necessarily putting very much high temperature through there. You're not going to be generating huge amounts of pressure. Um, so it's very much a very, uh, you know, entry level valve. Oh, we're getting that. And that is a standard one piece valve. So moving on from that, we have the two piece, which is probably the most common valve that, that we will see in the marketplace in, in, the, in the industry or the, or the sector that we sit in will be this two piece valve. So a two piece valve can be disassembled for cleaning services and inspection. Often the parts connected via a threaded connection and the valve must be completely removed from the pipe in order to separate the two parts. So what we have essentially on a, on a two part valve is we have a main part of the body, the ball is then inserted and then we have a secondary part which is screwed together um, with the two ball so with the two ball valve seats which hold that ball in place. But we'll have a look at some of the internal features um, a little bit later, but the two piece is probably the more common one that we will see on the market. The image that you see on the right hand side here, that is a two piece ball valve. You may not realize it at the time, but we can look at some of those features after. Um, but the two piece ball valve is the most common one um, that, that's out in the marketplace as we sit now. Um, and the other one that we have as well is a three piece one. Um, so this is more expensive. Um, as a three-part valve and these parts are generally clamped together by bolt connections I mean the, the advantage of this embodiment is that the valve can be serviced without removing the entire valve from the pipeline now you tend to see these on effluent plants on um, chemical plants or petrochemical they are generally in stainless steel and they're sort of denoted normally you'll see four bolts that pass through the, the, the sort of outer part of the body and the way it's designed is you've got uh, the pipe work connection on one side you've got the center part of the valve with the body uh, with the ball installed in it and then you have the third part which is another the, the other connection side and all those are clamped together um, with generally a bolt that goes all the way through but they are more expensive they're more specialized valves not really anything you, well, you certainly wouldn't see one in anyone's um, sort of domestic property then you have to go to some quite specialist commercial type of installations as well um, to, to start seeing these types of valves but those are the main three types of housing um, that we have when it comes to um, when it comes to the body types of the valves itself so ball designs, um, there are different types of ball designs. When we talk about it, it's how the ball is designed, how it works within the valve itself. So first of all, there's a floating one. And the majority of ball valves that, that we have are floating. Uh, and this is supported by valve seats. So if you imagine the internals of valve, which we will look at some internal components later, the, vo the ball is held by the stem, which is then supported by, um, by some generally PTFE seals and what that does it just keeps the ball in place keeps it central makes sure that it can pivot around its central um, central axis but it keeps it all clean and free from debris as well so a floating ball is the most traditional type of ball valve um, that we will see in the marketplace itself a trunnion valve um, so trunnion valves are a larger diameter with with higher operating pressure so generally looking at 100 million above and you're looking at sort of pressures of about 30 bar and above as well um, but the way this is different is the ball is supported from the, the top and the bottom so this reduces the amount of load that goes through the, the ball itself on the seat rings and it gives you a lower operating torque so essentially you've got two pivot points where on the standard ball valve we go from the top and it sort of floats or hangs in there with a trunnion valve you've got support at the top and at the bottom so that ball can rotate slightly easier because you're working at larger you know larger size you're looking at 100 mil pipe and above generally there's going to be a larger flow through there and, and inevitably you're going to have a higher pressure as well so we look at 30 bar and above not necessarily something we're going to see in the domestic market but certainly something that in, in, uh, exists in the commercial world itself. Um, the hole through the ball uh, might have different profiles, such as full ball, reduced ball, or V-shapes. Um, and there's different reasons why they do this. Um, so reduced bore, um, quite common uh, on some of certainly the, the entry level valves that we see in the market. So most ball valves have a reduced bore and as a result, the ball valve introduces friction losses into the system. Uh, these losses are still relatively small compared to other types of valves um, and one piece ball valves are almost or almost always reduced bore. So what we're talking about there, when we talk about the bore of the valve, so the, the ball valve itself has a has a central bore that the water passes through. Generally, what we want to try and keep for stable flow for, for less pressure is keep that bore the same size as the pipe itself but there are ones where we go through reduced bore 
it's a step down in size obviously you can imagine what that does to the flow of the water what it does inside so we have to be careful you know where we choose to use these types of applications full bore um so a full bore valve is the same bore diameter as the pipe as we said so if you've got a 15 mil pipe or a half inch pipe the ball through there will be the same uh, internal diameter what the pipe is the advantage of this is there is no extra friction loss um, and as the system is mechanically easier to clean um, because we, we're dragging the water through. The downside is that the ball and the housing are slightly bigger uh, than a standard ball because we, we're trying to maintain that same size ball going through the pipe itself. Um, the cost is therefore slightly higher, um, but in many applications, you know, especially when I was thinking that in a, in a domestic world, you know, you may not necessarily need a full, but there is a big benefit of having a full ball when it comes to the flow through the system and to reduce friction losses and reducing head loss through the system itself. Uh, a v-shaped ball uh, so the hole in the ball of the valves uh, and the valve seat has a v-shaped profile um, and as a result the desired flow rate can be controlled more precisely by rotating the ball and by optimizing the profile a linear flow uh, couches can be approached again it's not necessarily something we'd see in a domestic world but certainly start as we start to move up towards um, sort of light commercial semi-commercial and commercial installs we start to see these v-shaped balls um, so we can see some images here on the left hand side so this is what we'd see as a standard ball valve so this is the ball that we're talking about here um, the slot in the top there is where the handle is connected and this is a v-shaped ball here so you can see as as the valve is opened or closed as it starts to rotate on its axis as that v is opened up what we start to get then is, is a different different flow rate through that ball itself because we've come away from a central ball and we started to go towards a, of a, of a v-shape i always call them a characterized ball because each one has got its own flow characteristic but as you start to open or close and you can so fully open you'll have a, a desired flow rate that that will allow through because you reduce the orifice of the ball itself so that's what we look at when we're talking about a v-shaped ball itself so we've spoken about four bore. Um, so four bore valves are the same bore damage as a pipe, as we mentioned previously. Um, and we mentioned there's no friction losses through the through the, uh, through the system. So if we look at these two valves side, uh, side by side at the bottom here, we can see here that on a, on a four bore valve, the valve body is slightly bigger. You know, that's indicated by the, the illustration that we've got here. But what we can see is the, the flow of the pipe, which passes through the, through the valve and through the bore itself, there's no step down in size. So we're going to, going to guarantee that we're going to get a good stable throw, flow that's going to pass through that valve um, and we're not going to get any friction loss from the system. But if we look at a, re a reduced bore valve, you can see that the body is physically smaller um, because they've managed to reduce the size of that bore uh, ball by re reducing the size of the ball. Um, but what we are seeing here is this step down. So the flow is coming through here. Obviously, the step down here, you're going to start to get slight cavitation through the valve. You're going to start to get some, some pressure drop through the valve itself because that water is starting to slow itself down by hitting that area of, 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 of reduced bore. So those are disadvantages like we say you know we have got issues we have got um problems with with the way the water flows through the valve itself but we make sure we've got a full if you need to get guaranteed flow we get full bore through the valve itself um and that's obviously the, the benefit there but for smaller applications in domestic properties you may not necessarily need that so you opt for a reduced bore valve itself so that's the, the difference between full bore and reduced bore valves our range, so just a quick overview of, of the range of valves that Altenic have to offer. Um, obviously, starting with the, with the smaller sizes, so we have our, our compression range. Um, we go on the compression range from 15 mil to 54 mil. Uh, we do our, our valves are full bore, um, rated from minus 20 to, to 99 degrees. Um, RAS approved, um, all the stuff that you'd expect to see on the valve itself. So that's our compression range of valves. Screwed, va screwed range of valves as well. So we have those in the range. Um, those are, are, are for more, you know, sort of, um, sort of light commercial uh, installations. You wouldn't necessarily have a screwed valve in the in the property itself, um, but we do sort of have that range to cover off that sort of light commercial and semi-commercial offering. Uh, we go from quarter inch up to four inch on those ones. So there is a, a you know a, a large range covering um, when it comes to those valves. All lever handles as well on these ones. Um, again, smaller compression size with what we call a butterfly or a T-bar handle. Um, those are smaller size of 15 mil to 28 mil so more of a domestic product absolutely something that we'd expect to see uh you know within within com uh, domestic properties as opposed to commercial where we, we tend to use compression a lot more gas valves important one um so our gas valves are all, all approved to uh, bscn 331 um 2015 which is the is the new standard uh and we do have uh in there the um from half inch up to two inch uh, and we have the compression range as well 
So those are all the gas range. And as we spoke about previously as well, is the, the press fit range. So the press fit range varies. Um, generally depends on what the handle type is. So we have lever handles, we have butterfly handles, there's extended handles, there's nylon handles. There's all different types of, um, of, of, of handle types there, but the bodies tend to remain the same. Uh, again, large covering, we go from sort of 15 mil up to 54 mil on those. Um, anything from 15 up to 35 mil is a, is a dual press, so you can use a V or an M press and profile on those, and then anything above 35 mil. Um, so the, the 42, 54 goes up to a V press profile. So the smaller sizes that we use in a, in a domestic dwelling, um, they are dual purpose um, when it comes to the way they press. So that's our range, that's what we have to offer. We all have some mini ball valves and filter ball valves, which all the information is available on our website of the, of the ball valves that we have. Um, but that's our main our main coverage or our main option of, of valves that we have to offer. So we're starting to look at the, the more important sort of thing is, is the design and features of the valve now. Um, and we'll start to look at what we've got. So we, we'll break a valve down here with, with an illustration. We'll talk about the different components. So first two, so one and two standard compression nut, compression olive. You know, we all we all know what those are, but then we start to get into the design of the valve now. So, so part number three, this is the end fitting. Remember, we said before we have a two-piece housing with a two-part valve. This is where this comes into its own now. So, this end fitting is the first part of this three of this two uh, this two-part body. So we have the end fitting. Then, then we start to have the bore seals. So we spoke about having a floating valve. Now these two bore seals, so they're, they're um, highlighted as part number four here. Those will clamp around the ball and they will keep that ball in place to make sure it spins correctly around its own axis. They, you know, if they start to deter to to, to, to um, deteriorate, then you're going to start to have issues with the ball. But they they are a good material, and they are there to hold the ball in place. Item number five, standard, the ball. You know, we all know what the ball is. So that's the center part. That's the most important part of the valve. That's where we get the flow and that's where we get the isolation from there as well. So part number six, which is the spindle. Um, so that's where, th that's what operates from the handle all the way down to the valve itself. Um, so that's where we work. Um, that's where the main workings of the, of the operation of it are. Uh, part number seven, so we've got some spindle O-rings. Double O-ring gives you extra protection. So we keep the double O-ring section there um, to, to, to give us double protection on the seal itself. Item number eight is the handle. Number nine is a fixing nut. Um, and then number 10, this is the second part of, of, of the two parts um, of the body. So if you can imagine when the valve is put together, we have the main part of the body here. Or, uh, the seal, the ball valve seal goes in there. The ball, second seal, and then that screws together then. So you can see how it can be taken apart for maintenance as well. So once this is installed, if it's fitted, if you ever come up to one that you need to maintain or you need to um, carry any works on, it's just a case of unscrewing this. It probably will be glued, um, so it may be a tight connection, but it's just a case of, of unscrewing that, taking the components apart and start to have some, you know, carry out some maintenance, whether that replacing the seals, clean the ball, changing the spindle steels, etc. All that can be done when the valve is taken apart. So that is the basic valve construction of, of what we would know as a, a as a, a domestic sort of ball valve, lever action ball valve with compression fittings on there. anti blowout stem, a very, very important part um, of the valve is this anti blowout stem and the, and the design of the valve ensures that the stem cannot be blown out of the body in the event of the gland being removed or the valve is under pressure. So if there's any 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 kind of issue, any kind of failure that can take part in here, then we have to make sure we have this anti-blowout stem because we can create big problems if we don't. And the way the anti-blowout stem works, so before the ball is in, before the ball is installed into the body, the stem is pushed through from the inside. So you've mentioned got the body inside here, the stem is pushed through from the inside with a lip on the bottom, so it cannot be pulled all the way through. So that does mean obviously the glands are taken out, which which are holding it in place. It, it stops it from coming out, and you, you're going to save yourself some massive problems. So always always look out for for that sign, that type of feature on there, the anti blowout stem. It's very important that we have that um, on the valve to, to stop ourselves having any issues. And it's not just a case of taking the glands out. If there's any kind of deterioration over the years, you all well know as, as as plumbers, installers, whoever else, that you know deterioration can happen. So we put these features in place to make sure that if there is an issue, that we can combat that with the design of the valve itself so very important features is the anti-blowout stem now a couple of design features that we've got on our on our press fit valve um some that we'll, we'll talk through here so we spoke before about the um the leak detection or the system control leaking cases no pressing so say as water passes through because of the the, the the shape of the of the fitting itself as soon as it sees water if it's not been pressed it will start to leak through um which is important i know we don't want to have any leaks but if you have got to press it there are some systems where you know if everything's pushed together 
and it's, it's, it's relatively tight. It may take for it to get to one, two or three bar before it blows apart and starts to leak. But what we'll have on this one is a patented design um, that allows it to leak as soon as it starts to introduce water. So you can obviously isolate and get that fit in press before we cause yourselves any kind of, of, of catastrophic damage. So very important that we do that. Uh, another one is, is the patent is a cone shape from the upper ceiling system. So we can see here, this is, this is the patented area. And what that just does, it creates a second force, pushing the, the, the stem down into the ball itself um, to create that sort of tension or that tightness that, that sits within there itself. So it's very important that, that we have that nice seal inside there. So that's another patented system. Now, one of the other systems that were one of the features that we have on the press with valve is this self-cleaning uh, self system which helps combat, when we say combat legion, it, it combats stagnant water and it combats all that sort of stuff. And if you can, uh, hopefully you can pick up on the picture. But inside the ball, obviously, on the on the ball valve itself, we have there's two holes. There's, there's the, the, the pass right through the ball. But what we have on this is a, is a secondary open on the bottom of the ball valve. So what that does is, is it encourages flow through the valve when the valve is open, but it also creates a small bit of agitation within the ball to increase the turnover of water. So if you imagine if a ball valve has been, say, for instance, closed for a long time or even open and it, and it becomes stagnant, what happens is as the water flows through, it passes across this orifice at the bottom, just starts to agitate the flow. So there's any kind of bacterial growth or any nastiness that's in that valve or that system itself, it starts to just help, help that water to push through the valve um, and, and make sure that we're cleaning the valve and, and combating any kind of bacterial growth that could in there. So it's classed as a, as a you know, as, a, as an, it's not, can't be used as an but it aids in the assistance of preventing Legionella within the system itself. So again, a very important feature um, that we have in the valve. So it's uh it's yeah it's a good feature to have um but it's, that's involved on on our uh, on our press fit range of valves so those are the the sort of special internal designs um that we have on those valves uh, themselves so some of the valve features so these are some of the standards um that we work on so we mentioned so for the gas it's 331 2015 it's the most relevant standard um and also 13828 uh, which is the one for for potable water so you know as, as a product specialist as, as a manufacturer as a supplier we have to make sure that we put the, the best or the most appropriate valves into the market so the way we do that is covering the standards and covering the approvals which which we do on those valves positive opening and closing so robust valve position clear indication of the valve profile so one of the things that you tend to get uh, a benefit over a ball valve than over a gate valve is you can get almost guarantee that you're going to get positive isolation. As long as there's nothing stuck in the ball, you know that ball rotates while it's 90 degrees, it's going to close. Sometimes gate valves, as they come down, as the gates come down and sit in the body, they cannot get full isolation or full positive isolation. So we, you know, it's it's another another thing to look at as a positive is we do get that positive uh, positive open and positive closing. And we've got the handle on the top, so we can guarantee when you walk up to the valve, you know the handle's not been messed with, and the handle's in the direct direction of flow that that valve is either open or closed so a clear indicator a solid handle to uh, designed to allow for operation so this is a requirement of the EN standard as well uh, we have that solid that side you don't want to walk up to a valve and the handle snap off if you're trying to create an isolation um, so again it's part of the standard something that we adhere to double o-ring on the stem so we mentioned about having that double o-ring so it's additional security for the seal it's a longer lifespan um, and it's ease of operation as well. You know, you've got that security, you've got that peace of mind um, that you've got that double O-ring in there to make sure that everything is uh, should be should there be a failure. A solid brass ball, so solid construction preventing cavitation. Sometimes, you know, th th there may be some of the, um, the the cheaper valves in the marketplace where they're, they, they're maybe not a solid or they're just coated in certain materials. And, you know, when you get cavitation, they can start to corrode, etc. cetera. Um, but as a solid brass ball, four bore system as well so we are reducing those system pressure losses etc so we've got all that that covered off with that solid brass ball high quality stem as well so the stem seals one thing that you don't want to do is, is have any degradation of, of, of the seals over time so it's quite important that we use a high quality material in there it increases the lifespan but it also eases the aid of opera uh, the ease of operation you know if there's less materials in there they can start to become hard and start to become brittle over time so when you start to operate the ball valve it becomes difficult to work so um you know we, we have uh, you know high quality material in there so every time you use a ball you, know, you should always get the same nice smooth operation to ensure um that we've got that covered off um again high, uh, so, so the ptfe ball seals Smooth operations allows for isolation in, in year uh, isolation in year within without leak, so we can continue to use that. You know, peace of mind that the valve is going to work well, um, and you're not going to have any issues as you go along with those. Uh, so, uh, standard approved material, so source my uh, European suppliers, uh, fully traceable and compliant and compliant material to the standard. So we know that you know we can trace it back to the brass bar when it was supplied. 
you know we use we use what, what we call bare brass or, or, or fresh brass um so you know some 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 companies or manufacturers might use tailing so they the way they mix their brass but we always use um new brass um to make sure that we're getting the best quality materials in there and it's part of the standard as well anti-blowout stems something that we spoke about before so it's part of the internal construction but it does prevent leaking spindles i'm sure that that many people have, have come up to to a bore valve before and they found the water leaking out the stem it's probably only got a single o-ring in there uh, sorry it's got a, a single stem in there so if the o-ring has started to, to, to go then you've also got the issue of, of that that stem blowing out body marking um this is massively for traceability is the data production the dn size and the pn rating um and what that allows to you know if somebody has an issue um and they you know they contact us or contact any manufacturer and say okay i've got an issue with the valve with the data production etc we can trace that back then so generally it will be a code or just be a series of numbers which means something to us as manufacturers um, and generally what you tend to see is the week that it was manufactured and the year that it was manufactured so it just gives us full traceability um, of where the part was manufactured. You can probably trace it back to, to the manufacturing, who it was tested by or who it was machined by, et cetera. We have all that traceability in place um, to make sure we're giving out the best quality product, but also gives it massive amount of traceability um, through the marketplace. DN size and PM rating, that obviously is there for a visual indicator if you come up to the valve and you can see what it's for. Approvals. Um, so we have various approvals. We've spoken about the approvals on on the valves themselves. Um, so the one three five four seven, uh, and that's industrial valves, so copper alloy ball valves. So the larger size valves. That's the standard that, that, that they adhere to um, on there. Probably one of the most important ones that we have as well is is three three one for the gas. Now um, that standard was updated a couple of years ago. I think we were one of the first, more well, the first manufacturer to get our valve uh, approved to the new standard um, through through BSI and through the British Standard um, process. So we always make sure that our valves are up to are the most up to date standards um, to ensure that we're putting the best product into the marketplace as well. Um, and some of the other, so the other standards as well there is got the 13828 um, and that's building valves and so manual operated copper alloy and stainless steel bore valves for potable water supply in buildings and that's the test requirement. So Every approval has a test requirement, which we have to meet. That can be the material, that can be the, um, the, 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 the performance standard, everything. But we have a sheet that we have to work to, we have to manufacture to, to ensure that the valves that we're putting into the marketplace are as they should be and doing what they should be doing. So, you know, we do have all the standards covered. It could be for gas, whether it come for press fit, whether it come for the RAS installation, whether it come to any other standards, all of our valves meet that criteria. Um, so, you know, we, we can be safe in the knowledge that the products that we're putting into the marketplace are are the best ones that, that we can make. Obviously, RAS approvals are a massive one. People are always asking for RAS approvals itself. And that brings us to the end of the presentation today. So I hope that you all found it um, beneficial that you all learned something from there um we've got if there are any questions there's a little feature where you can post if, the, if there are any questions that you can't think of now um you can ask us that my details are on the first slide if you can go back and watch that slide as well um so yeah like I say i hope you all found it beneficial um i thank you all for your time and attending um and keep your eyes peeled for our next session as well which is on heat networks and hrus um so you can register for that as well. so thank you all very much for your time ed we do um, have one question that's come in from, thank you for the presentation. We do have one question that's come in from Anthony James and he just asked okay. quickly, are all of your ball valves uh, for gas full bore? Yes. And there we go. <laughs> Any, anything else? Anybody, anything that's gonna catch me out? No? No, that's, that. oh, just and just a thank you, yep. Okay, perfect. No problem. Like I said, all of our information uh, is, is on our website. So www.ltechnic.co.uk. Um, all the information, so data sheets, anything to do with approvals and stuff is all stored on there as well. So if you've never been over there before, have a look on our website. We've got uh, various bits of data um, available. So yeah, again, all the information is there. But thank you all for your time. We do really appreciate it. And, uh, and keep your eyes peeled for the next one.